Hi, in this series of videos we are going to speak about visualization, which is a very important part of data literacy on two sides. On the one hand is that we have to understand the data that others have shown, have prepared, and on the other hand we also will be able to try to make visualizations to explain our findings to other people. And in this part it's really important that the visualizations were easy to understand and also they were nice because in fact they are part of the story and the better the story is the more the people will understand better or will arrive more the message that we are showing to them. So we are going to use a, a tool which is data wrapper which is very easy to use and has multiple options with, to do many nice graphs as you have seen are seen here right and we are going to use part of the content which is available for preparing workshops and courses into the use of or to explain the possibilities and the uses of data wrapper. Okay, so as you are going to see in, when, in different works and presentations and documents we have to illustrate data and this data could be either with charts, with uh, ten scatter plots, tendency lines, we also heat maps where we have uh, values of variables representing at each different zones, histograms, tendency, many, many options that we have for visualization. So what are the things or the steps that we have to do when we are using data wrapper? As you will see, independently of what is the type of visualization that you are going to do, we will follow four steps. The first one is to upload the data. The data can be uploaded either for your CSV or XLS5 or from a Google Sheet directly uh, updated the information from there or path a table, right? Or even if you have your own file and, and you update. So when you have this part of upload data, the second one will be check and describe. It will be detected automatically what are the options or what are the types of data. You can change this, you will see how to do it in the next videos, right? You can also correct if you see some misprints later. The third step will be to visualize. We will have basic options about visualization, options alignment, appearance, axis. And the last one is to publish or embed, either if we are going, if we want to extract an image or we are going to put this into a website, okay? So uh, one important thing about data wrapper concerning the formats that we are exporting for data visualization on, on webs and on devices is that it is responsive. And as you have seen, we have a graph and this is how it can be seen in different devices such as laptop, a cell phone, a tablet, right? So you can see that also it's not just rescaling this image and making it smaller in order to fit with the size that we have on the screen. Then we, only, we also have the rescale to be responsive in order to adapt the scales in order that it will be uh, fit in the map. As you have seen, if you compare these two graphs, the same formation, but the X scale has changed in order to make it possible that it fits within the screen. A very important thing that we will see later on the options is that you can have, if you have your own company, your own project, you can have a, a, your own style and all the graphs that well exported will fit with your own style and can fit within your publications or, or your work. Here we have examples of use of data wrapper but very important communication companies and, and journals such as the New York Times as we have here, also Zeit Online in Germany, right, or the Spiegel. So you have seen several examples where we have not only maps but also charts explain the information that later is discussed uh, within the content, right? And, uh, well, here we have seen how the same graph could fit with different types of uh, examples. So here we have an example of the, of the same graph for the New York Times, for Wired and for other types of uh, sources or templates that of different uh, journal companies, right? Good. You have here see examples of some of them, very well known around, around the world. And this is related with the options that we have with Data Wrapper. 
you, there's an option that is free. You can even start to work with data wrapper without registering. It has very powerful, I think from the, all the options that we have found of data visualization tools, this is the one most powerful for the, for the free version, right? You can even with this free version collaborate with teams and publish and create an unlimited number of charts and maps and visualizations, right? But it's, you have to pay only if you have a company you want to use your custom theme that could fit with the rest of the aesthetic of, of your publication or if you are an enterprise or an organization that you want also to have these formats uh, uh, applied or to be used. And this is was just what all we want to say, just as a brief introduction about what is data wrapper and what are the options. In the next videos, we are going to see how to do charts, plots, and other types of visualizations.